Hello friends, this video on biotechnology principles part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exams. So now let us talk about the first important feature in a cloning vector and that is origin of replication. So what do we mean by origin of replication first of all? Now whenever we talk about the process of replication, there has to be a specific site on the DNA from where the process of replication will start. And that specific point is known as the origin of replication. So the process of replication starts from a specific sequence on DNA and this specific sequence is known as origin of replication which is often written as ORI in short form. Now it is very important to know that the process of replication doesn't just start from anywhere. There are some specific locations or specific sequences on DNA from where it starts. Now why is it important to note the origin of replication that's because when the foreign gene or the foreign DNA is being introduced into the host cell our main uh, purpose is that the foreign gene or the foreign DNA should be able to replicate. Now for the foreign DNA to be able to replicate it should get connected to the origin of replication that means it should be near that area where the origin of replication is located so that means it is important to know the origin of replication of the cloning vector so let us suppose this is the vector so this is the cloning vector which is for example let us suppose this is a plasmid dna which is a circular dna which is capable of self-replicating but still in this dna also there will be some specific point from where the origin of replication starts so it is important that the foreign gene or the foreign dna connects to this plasmid dna somewhere near the origin of replication so that it can be a part of the process of replication so now if you look at this gene even more closer in a closer way for example here we have taken the example of PBR322 so what is PBR322 it is the first widely used vector in genetic engineering so this was the first ever used vector so what is this PBR why is the name so much complicated so PBR322 so here P stands for plasmid because this is a plasmid circular DNA. So P stands for plasmid. What, what does B and R stands for? So B and star, R stands for the name of the scientists Bolivar and Rodriguez. So these were the scientists who actually created this vector or who at first who were, they were the first ones to describe this vector in the concept of genetic engineering and that is why it was named after them so that is why PBR so these were the scientists who constructed this PBR 322 so if you look at the origin of replication in PBR 322 you see this is where the origin of replication is located so th this is that part of the DNA or the, here the, those sequence of DNA are located from where the process of replication will start. Now we need to remember that if we want many copies or multiple copies of the target DNA then the foreign piece of DNA has to be linked to this sequence right so because this is the place from where the replication will start. Now if the foreign DNA that is the foreign cut piece of DNA if it is linked at this in this region then that will also multiply. So if this say the plasmid DNA if it produces some 10 copies then the foreign DNA will also produce some 10 copies. So it should be cloned to a vector whose origin support high copy number. Now not for all vectors it is not necessary that their origin of replication will support very high copy number. So that also needs to be taken care that the origin of replication supports high copy number. That means if the if the foreign DNA is linked to the origin of replication of that particular vector it will definitely replicate because it is linked to the origin of replication now since high copy number is associated with that origin therefore a large number of copies of DNA will be produced so these are this is very important that origin of replication should be located and it should be associated with high copy number only then the vector would be a good cloning vector 
So here if you look at this PBR322, the origin of replication in PBR322 is derived from E. coli plasmid. So the plasmid is of E. coli. So this is essentially required for replication once inserted inside a host and that, in fact that is the purpose of the vector. Why do we need vector? So that the foreign DNA is able to replicate once it is introduced inside the host body. So this is one important feature. So this also controls the copy number of linked DNA as I said just now. So not all vectors origin will support high copy number. So we need to take care that we select a vector whose origin supports a very high copy number. So if the copy number is high then more number of copies of the foreign DNA will be produced. The next important feature is the restriction sites. So what are these restriction sites? As the name suggests, restriction site is something which is related to the restriction enzymes. Now by now we know that all the restriction endonuclease enzymes, they need specific recognition sequence. Only when they see that sequence, they do their job. And what is the job of the restriction endonuclease enzymes? Their job is to cut DNA at specific locations. Now what are those specific locations are determined by the recognition sequences. So those sequences, wherever those sequences are present, they are known as the restriction sites. So restriction sites are extremely important because wherever restriction sites are present there you will have the recognition sequence and those recognition sequence will actually invite the restriction enzymes and then the DNA will get cut. So specific recognition sites need to be present on the vector for each restriction enzyme and also another important thing is that each restriction enzyme has a specific recognition sequence or a specific uh, sequence which it recognizes, right? So that means if you talk about different enzymes like BAM, H1, SAL1, you talk about ECOR1, you talk about PVU2, you talk about PST1, you talk about PVU1. So there are so many restriction enzymes, but each of these enzymes have got a specific restriction site or a specific recognition sequence. So all those recognition sequence need to be present on the vector, even if not for all of them, but at least for many of them, the restriction sites should be present because if those restriction sites are not present, then the restriction enzymes will not be able to operate because restriction enzymes operate only when the recognition sequence or the restriction sites are present. Now let us look at PBR322. So here when as long as we are discussing the cloning vector, we will take the example of PBR322. So in PBR322, as you saw here, this was the origin of replication. This portion is for origin of replication. Now again, the entire DNA, some specific sequence of DNA is divided or it, that they, they are reserved for a set of restriction enzyme. So here this region which you see here, this is for the enzyme PVU2. Again here if you see, this region is for the enzyme SAL1. If you look at this region, this is for BAM H1. You look at this portion, so this is for another restriction enzyme called HIMD3. You look at this region, so here this portion is for ECOR1. Here again you have restriction sites for enzymes PVU1 and here you have PST1. So these are all different restriction enzymes and all of them need a specific recognition sequence to do their job and that recognition sequence is present in these specific regions. Now if you see here this, this is just one vector but this one vector has multiple recognition sites or multiple restriction sites which contain the recognition sequence for different restriction enzymes. So in this case what will happen if you want this vector to be cut by BAM H1. So BAM H1 will be able to cut it because the recognition sequence for BAM H1 is present here. So BAM H1 will cut it somewhere in this region. 
Similarly, if you want this to be cut by ECO R1, so that will also be able to cut it because the recognition sequence for ECO R1 is also present here. But now if you think of a vector or a plasmid DNA which doesn't have any restriction site, what will happen? If there are no restriction sites, then the restriction enzymes will not be able to operate. If they are not able to operate, then the this vector will not be able to cut. If you cannot cut the vector, then obviously your vector will not be able to combine with the foreign piece of DNA. So recombinant DNA will not be able to form. So for the formation of recombinant DNA, it is very important that your vector can be cut at specific location. And for that, it is important that restriction sites are present on your vector DNA so that the DNA scissors can be active and they can do their job. So here you can see now once you have the restriction sites then the restriction enzyme will be able to cut it. Now once it has been cut so a specific region or a space is being created so that the cut is foreign DNA. So this one is the foreign piece of DNA which contains our gene of interest. So this foreign piece of DNA can now come and it can combine to this plasmid DNA or the vector DNA and as a result recombinant DNA is formed. So presence of restriction site is the second feature which should be present in a cloning vector. Now the third feature that needs to be present is the selectable marker. So let us see what are selectable markers. Now selectable markers are basically antibiotic resistant genes. So there are certain set of genes which are present on the DNA which are resistant to antibiotics. Now here we will take the example of the same uh, cloning vector that is PBR322. So here we have two selectable markers present. One is this AMP and the other one is TET. So what is AMP and what is TET? Okay, now when we say antibiotic resistance, so there are many antibiotics which are present. So the antibiotics can be tetracycline, ampicillin, chloramphenicol, canamycin. So these are all various antibiotics. Now each cloning vector should have certain antibiotic resistant genes which are resistant at least against some of these antibiotics. So for example here in PBR322 you see that it has AMP which is for ampicillin and TET which is for tetracycline. So for these two antibiotics, there are antibiotic resistant genes which are present in PBR322. So these regions can actually provide resistance against tetracycline and ampicillin. Right? So what does this do? Why do we need resistance against antibiotics? So that resistance can be provided to the host against these antibiotics. So in case of PBR322, it will be now once this uh, recombinant DNA which is formed with the help of PBR322 and the foreign gene. So that once that recombinant DNA enters inside the host body. So it should be able to provide resistance to the host against ampicillin and tetracycline. And how does it help? It also helps to identify and distinguish between transformants and non-transformants. So here you have got two new terms. What are transformants and non-transformants? So like for that we will have to understand the process of transformation. Now the presence of selectable marker is very important but its importance is understood or you, you are able to understand its significance once it enters the host cell. Once the recombinant DNA enters into the host body, only then you realize the importance of the presence of selectable markers. So now before we talk about transformants and non-transformants, let us first try to understand what is transformation. Thank you. Please visit www.examfeo.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.